This is KPTV with Cameron Mustin, Todd Denning, and Brittany Gilman with the news. Shane Sanderson with weather, and Casey Berthager with sports. Good evening, Iowa. I am Cameron Mustin, and this is KPTV. Our top story tonight, devastating news from Europe. Three days ago, on April 26th, the worst nuclear accident in the history occurred near the city of Pripyat in northern Ukraine. The fourth reactor at the Chernobyl power plant exploded and burned during routine maintenance. Our U.S. informant Aaron Blackmore told us workers plan to use the downtime to test whether the reactor could be cooled if the plant lost power. However, during the test, workers violated safety protocols and power surged inside the plant. Despite attempts to shut down the reactor entirely, another power surge caused a chain of reaction explosions inside, which resulted in the nuclear core itself being exposed, spewing radioactive material into the atmosphere. A series of fires started at random in the closest proximity of the blast. Fire marshals then attempted to put out the blazes. For fires close to the blast, however, helicopters came in and dumped sand and other fire condensing materials into the danger zones attempting to stop the fires and contain the contamination. In national news, Todd, sadly, has another story dealing with fire. He's live at the Public Library. At 10.52 a.m. today in Los Angeles, the fire alarm rang at LA Central Library. Luckily, within five minutes, first responders reached the library. However, it took more than 350 firefighters and nearly every part of the fire department to squelch the flame. Initial efforts were focused on the northeast stacks, before then switching focuses to the walls of the library. The combination of heat and close quarters require that teams of firefighters be switched every 15 minutes. By 1 p.m., temperatures soared to about 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Finally, firefighters used master water streams to knock out visible flame, and salvage teams stepped up efforts. Ventilation teams used jackhammers to make 18 holes in the library, breaking through more than six feet of concrete and reinforced steel. In the end, sadly, 800,000 books were lost in the flames. Back to you, Cameron. Thanks, Todd. A sad day in the world of literature. We'll be right back after this. Are you tired of all-purpose cleaners that just don't get the job done? Switch to Mr. Muscle, the new all-purpose cleaner. It has the strength to get rid of grime and stains, hot sauce, pudding, marker, makeup. Mr. Muscle, we have all the strength you need. Welcome back. It is apparent that the USSR is contemplating on whether or not to further publicize the events of Chernobyl, as it could be a serious political risk to the government. However, it is a little too late now with the radiation reaching as far as Sweden. Despite their best efforts to deny this incident, the Soviets finally made an announcement yesterday taking responsibility for the worst nuclear accident to ever occur in the history of the world as of now. But to hopefully bring some cheer to our evening, here is Shane Sanderson with the weather. Thanks Cameron and what a great day to be an American. Good evening everybody and a very happy Tuesday to you. I'm Shane Sanderson here with your local weather and I know you're all as excited as I am because trust me the weather is good across southeast Iowa, across the entire Midwest for the next 48 hours. We won't see a single rain cloud. Here in the southeast, right now, we've reached a high of 78 and a low of 60 as expected this evening. Tomorrow, we'll be trading clouds for sunshine, but the temp is only going to reach 71. Thursday, we should see a high of 75. And the sun is going to be making an all-day appearance, but the wind will make it feel a little colder. Fridays, those clouds we just got rid of will be back, providing a very cloudy day. Looking further into the weekend, we have some rain in the forecast. We're looking at thunder showers. Throughout the morning and afternoon, Sunday into the evening, and scattered rain showers Sunday morning. Back to you, Cameron. Thanks, Shane. I thought it was April showers that brought Mayflowers. Well, normally that's true, but do you guys know what Mayflowers bring? How about you, Cameron? <laughs> I'm almost afraid to ask. What do Mayflowers bring? They bring pilgrims. 
Huh. Get it. That, of course, was Shane Sanderson with the weather. Let's keep the good news going and hear from Brittany. Hi, Cameron. I'm here at the Humane Society's building on the corner of 4th and Washington, where they have reached an all-time high of pet adoptions in a 24-hour period. Thanks to the efforts of the students, a marathon pet adoption was set into action. So we learned that these animals needed homes, and we started an adoption marathon, and it's really going well. A total of 42 cats and 15 dogs found new homes today, bringing joy to dozens of families. There is still time to adopt. They will be open until 10 this evening afterwards. The shelter asks you to call for an appointment at 309-555-4298. This is Brittany Gilman with KPTV. Thanks, Brittany. That's wonderful to see. Now, here's Casey Berhager with sports. Good evening, everyone. A lovely day for the Red Sox as Roger Rocket Clemens proved to earn the nickname by successfully striking out 20 of Seattle's Mariners, sending zinger after zinger. Take a look at him. Look at his focus. The flick of his wrist. His precision and dedication is seeping into every throw. The Boston Celtics beat the Atlanta Hawks for the second game in a row with a score of 119 to 108. This series is going to be over quickly if the Hawks don't step it up. In the Angels vs. Twins game, the NVL is looking into why the Metrodome's special roofing ripped in the middle of the game, causing the dome to sink into the stadium and delay the game for nine minutes. Even with that minor delay, the Twins gave it their all, only to fall short at the hand of the Angels with a score of 7-6. to six. And big news for the NFL as the Tampa Bay Buccaneers picked the Auburn Tigers' promising running back, Bo Jackson. An excellent pick as Bo has had an impressive college career. Some coaches even going as far as to call Jackson superhuman. Bo's history includes a total of 45 touchdowns, 676 plays, and 4,575 yards, all in a four-year period. This may be the start of something wonderful for the Buccaneers. Cameron? Thanks, Casey. Now that wraps it up for all your news at 5. I am Cameron Mustin, and from all my family here at KPTV, have a wonderful night, and we will see you all at 10.